असलम कैसे हैं आप सब ओपन योर नोट बुक्स एंड योर ब्रॉडवे बुक्स टू पेज नंबर फिफ्टीन फर्स्ट वी विल गो थ्रू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वी रोट इन आर नोट बुक्स यू हैड रिटर्न क्वेश्चन वन वॉज द राइटर फॉन्ड ऑफ फूड हाउ कैन यू टेल येस द राइटर वॉज फॉन्ड ऑफ फूड वी कैन टेल बिकॉज ही लाइक मटन कोफ्ताज अ लॉट but was only allowed to as a child he was not allowed to have second helpings so as an adult he always had them also dr baker's remarked that he is overweight and that he should cut down on his food intake let's move towards our textbooks question number 4 describe a how the frogs entered the fountain and the house b where the frogs were finally sent and why let's look at how you're going to be writing this down in your notebooks you will write the a part as question number 2 describe how the frogs entered the fountain and the house the answer is when the author introduced some fish into the fountain he didn't notice that there were tadpoles in the bucket they grew into frogs multiplied quickly and began to enter the house note it down in your notebooks you will write the b part as question 3 describe where the frogs were finally sent and why the answer will be the frogs were rounded up and sent to a pond near the railway station they entered the station and created a nuisance there so finally they were sent to lucknow zoo by the station master okay let's look once again at these answers for question 2 you will be writing down when the author introduced some fish into the fountain he didn't notice that there were tadpoles in the bucket they grew into frogs multiplied quickly and began to enter the house and for the b part that is question number 3 you will write down the frogs were rounded up and sent to a pond near the railway station they entered the station and created a nuisance there so finally they were sent to the lucknow zoo by the station master Let's move towards the next question in your textbooks. Question number 5. When Aunt Mabel saw the frog in the pot, how did she react? Do you think she was just being silly? When you write this in your notebooks, this question will be question number 4. When Aunt Mabel saw the frog in the pot, how did she react? Do you think she was just being silly? Answer: When Aunt Mabel saw the frog in the pot, she screamed loudly and created a lot of commotion at home. She overreacted to the situation and her behavior was rather silly for a grown-up person. Write it down in your notebooks. When Aunt Mabel saw the frog in the pot, she screamed loudly. and created a lot of commotion at home she overreacted to the situation and her behavior was rather silly for a grown up let's move towards the next question question number 6 is pick out three sentences from the story that you think are funny write down your answer in the comments section below we will not be writing this down in our notebooks question number 7 Do you think Aunt Mabel is an odd person? Think of five words to describe her. Personally, I definitely think that Aunt Mabel was an odd person because of her reaction to the frogs and the way she reacted when a frog was in the pot. Write down your opinion in the comment section below. You will not be writing down this question in your notebooks as well. Let's move to the next page. That is page number 16 we have a new exercise that is learn words
Look at the following sentences from the story. Apparently, snakes do not like their pungent aroma. I, too, believed in this folklore until I was told by an expert on reptiles that snakes do not have a strong sense of smell and would be impervious to the scent of flowers or other odors. The words that are in italics have something in common. They refer to the different types of smell. Italics means the word that are a bit slumped. Let's see which words are they. Aroma. Smell. Scent. Odor. Smells, however, can be pleasant and unpleasant. Stink. Stench. Odor. Pong are all words that are used for unpleasant smells. Aroma, fragments, perfume, and scent refer to pleasant smells. One, complete the following sentences with an appropriate smell word from the list above. That is, stink, strench, odor, pong, Aroma, fragments, perfume. A. I could get the rich dash of fresh coffee from the kitchen. Which correct word would fit in this? What do you think? The most suitable. Write down the word aroma in your textbooks in the blank. B. The residents complain to the municipal authorities about the dash of the garbage dump in their locality. Garbage dump means that you will be writing down a word from the unpleasant smells list. Which word do you think is the most suitable? The right option is stench. S-T-E-N-C-H. Stench. C. In summer, my garden is filled with the dash of jasmine. Now jasmine, flowers, means pleasant smell. Which will be the correct answer? most suitable option is scent. D. We use room fresheners to drive away the bad dash from the bathroom. Bad means unpleasant smell. Which answer do you think is the most suitable? The most suitable option is odor. O-D-O-U-R. Odor. E. As she walked past, I could smell the dash she was wearing. Now this means a pleasant smell. What do you think is the correct option? The most suitable option is perfume. Let's move towards the next question. 2. Which of these adjectives best describe the smells of the items below? You can use more than one adjective to describe a smell. Let's see what's written in the box. Stinking. Aromatic. Fragrant, smelly, scented, perfumed, sweet smelling. What do you think? How would the herbs in a garden smell? Aromatic. That's right. Write down the word aromatic in the blank. B. Old socks. What do you think that old socks would smell like? Fill out smelly with old socks. C. Rotten eggs. Fill out stinking with rotten eggs. D. A hairdressing salon. What do you think a hairdressing salon would smell like? A hairdressing salon would smell perfumed. Fill down the word perfumed in the blank. E. A rose garden. What do you think a rose garden would smell like? Fill down the word fragrant beside the blank of rose garden. Let's move to page number 17. The next exercise is learn pronunciation. Listen to these words. Humor. Success. Practice. Philosophical. Garland. When we say them slowly, they sound like Hume, er, suck, 
success practice philosophical garland each part is called a syllable in each syllable there is a vowel sound what are vowels do you know what they are and what words make vowels vowels are a e i o u so let's look at this word over here humor it is made up of two syllables the first syllable h u m u is the vowel and the second syllable o u r u is the vowel i have underlined the vowels in each syllable for you success it has two syllables in the first syllable suck s u c u is the vowel in the second syllable c e s s e is the vowel in the word practice p r a c the first syllable has one vowel a the second syllable tis t i s e has the vowel i the word philosophical has one two three four five syllables this means that it has five vowels let's look at them phi p h i the first syllable has the vowel i the second syllable l o has the vowel o the third syllable s o has the vowel o the fourth syllable p h i has the syllable i the last syllable cal has the si vowel a so the syllables in the word fi lo so fi kal r i o o i a in the word garland there are two syllables the first syllable g a r has the vowel a the second syllable land has the vowel a mark these vowels in your notebook mark the vowels in your textbook let's go down they have written that the letters that stand for these vowel sounds are in italics you can see that they are a bit slant i've also underlined them for you let's see what's written down here are a few words from the passage split each word as in the examples above then underline the letters that stand for the vowel sound in each of the words the first five words have two syllables each and the next five have three syllables each write this exercise in your notebooks Let's divide each word into their syllables. The word garden has two syllables. Gar, den. The word helpings has two syllables. Hel, pings. The word pungent has two syllables. Pun, gent. The word nestling has two syllables. Nestle, ing. The word opined has two syllables. O pined. The word festivals has three syllables. Fes t wals. The word oncessant has three syllables. On ses ant. The word consignment has three syllables. Con sai men. The word impervious has 3 syllables. M per vis. The word multiplied has 3 syllables. Mul t plied. Do not forget to write down today's date when you write down this exercise in your notebooks. The next exercise is learning grammar. A expressing frequency. Once, twice, three times, etc. Over here what we're going to discuss how the word once shows something has been done one time. 
the word twice shows something has happened or has been done two times. The word three times means something has been done thrice or has happened three times. Look at these sentences. Dr. B, who drops in to see me once a year, remarked that I looked overweight. What does once a year here mean? That Dr. Big author ko saal mein ek dafa dekhne aate the aur unhone kaha ki wo overweight hai. The next sentence. Grandfather fired once or twice more in the darkness and then went back to bed. Here once or twice means ek ya do baar. Matlab grandfather ne ek ya do baar andhere mein fire kiya aur phir bed par chale gaye sone. The words once, twice, three times etc. are used to say how often something happens. Students, we have now completed the exercise of frogs in the fountain and are completely done with the chapter. This is it. Bye!